Yo guys, what is going on? Nickname is just Yellow and uh, today this Norwegian hardcore PC gamer is gonna make a video about how to warm up and or practice Counter-Strike uh, hardcore. Okay, um, I've already made a video in the past, but I think after making this video right here, I'm gonna let this one uh, stick up a little bit so it uh, well, a lot of people get to watch it, and then I'm gonna delete my older one. And the reason for this is because this video right here, it's not only reigning supreme in terms of either warming up, st or, like keeping yourself warmed up, but also to not pra you know practicing Counter Strike in terms of just increasing or maintaining your role scale, um, especially for lower skill players. By the way, this video is gonna be. Very very good because now you get to understand what you should either do or what you need to be able to get in order to do these kind of things that will allow you to play Counter Strike on a way higher level than what you did before. Um, yeah, equipment in Counter Strike is obviously very important, uh, but also tuning your computer uh, the very best compared to what you had uh, had it at from before that will also matter. Yeah, quickly by the way. Um, here we got the map name, which is aim underscore warmup underscore D. Uh, you can search that up on the community workshop for Counter-Strike. Uh, then you want to apply, when you have joined up in the deathmatch uh, on this map, you want to add the command uh, mp underscore teammates underscore r underscore enemies uh, 1 and sv underscore infinite underscore ammo 1. Adding these will allow you to do exactly what I did right here. Um, if you're completely new to the starting these maps uh, you can uh, just you know click on play then you click on offline with bots and then you click on uh, community maps and you will find this one and there we go so that being said yeah uh, going back to things that you will realize that you need to get done uh, in order to be able to perform what I'm doing right here uh, will be for example to get a 144 Hertz monitor or overclocking the one that you already got I have a video about that so you can just l search that up on my channel um, so there is that. Uh, getting good hand-to-eye coordination or at least tuning your sensitivity to something that is more useful. And by that I mean a slower sensitivity. Um, in which currently right now I'm using 1.95 cents in-game and not using raw input. And I'm using 800 DPI, which is actually really high, but I'm finding it to be very comfortable in terms of uh, maybe like some enemy will shoot me from my back. I got so much FPS uh, gaming experience from the past. I'm just doing 180 flips and I'm actually killing them which is kind of cool and it doesn't really happen super often when you're watching pro people's play which is why I really want to have that kind of ability you know even if I'm getting catch from the back if they fuck up once they will be dead so there are obvious uh, positive and negativities to that you know because my overall aim won't be super fucking good but the thing I want to get across here is that tuning your game properly will also be very valuable now when you have all the conditions set for playing and practicing Counter-Strike, which I will assume you got, you can now take it to a step further and by actually playing a lot. I would recommend playing the map that you're mainly looking on the screen for like 20 minutes a day max. Uh, I actually get worn after playing 20 minutes of this map because it's so fucking intensive because there's so many targets and so much twitching to do. You know, again, you can practice whatever the hell you like. As you can see here, I'm doing twitches, which is kind of funny. Um, but... Taking it to the next level is to play against real life people and trying to outkill them and outsmart them and outskill them and, you know, doing those kind of things. Uh, or you can try and outlock them, which will never work, uh, dumbasses. <laughs> but yeah, actually practicing against real life people has so much more benefits to it. Um, they won't move like bots, which is a good one. Uh, they will move intelligently, they will try and get intel of where you are, they might camp certain lines of sights, they might make random guesses that will be surprisingly accurate because of how their intuition is very skilled and developed because of how they play the game of fuck done which is something that is happen happening more and more to me as I keep on playing counter strike you just you're able to make these educated guesses that are just a little bit too accurate i find that to be very fascinating and fun but anyways Playing against real life people in the 1v1 arenas, uh, which by the way you can find them when you click on, from the main menu of CSGO, you click on play and then you click on browse community servers and then you just search up arena, uh, you'll find a lot of arena servers. Pick one that is close to your house and you can start to practice against real life people of any skill. Uh, this is the important part for people who are of lower skill because uh, it will allow you to get your shit pushed in uh, and that way you get to see what you did was either good or wrong or maybe they were just super lucky or skilled. It's probably the skill by the way because on those servers there are no fucking cheaters I'm not gonna lie like either people are super skilled or lucky uh, even though again I'm able to hang up with like the top three or two all the time on those servers so putting stuff into context uh, you don't even need to think of cheats you just need to try and adapt yourself to the game because the game can be incredibly brutal but that's a part of learning the game but the thing with the one way one servers is that you now actually get to work your skill into a more organic and proper setting that will actually give you some benefit of playing Strike, you know, 
So the step from there on again is to put it into a legitimate context. Whether or not you want to play regular matchmaking, which uh, the bomb timer is way too long and the total round length is also way too long. You could do that too, um, but I wouldn't recommend playing matchmaking in this context because it's not the pro um, way of playing the game. But anyways, you can also play Face It, you can play ESCA. I would prefer ESCA, but that is just what I prefer, you know. Um, you can also play Sivo, uh, I've heard of. Uh, there are probably all the services out there as well. But playing in these kind of proper contexts of the game in which there are multiple enemies, you're playing on proper maps, um, and you're playing with people in which teamwork, it comes into play, not as much as it should be, uh, I would, uh, I would literally just, you know, I don't even know how to put this into words, so I'm gonna skip it for later. But, like, when you're playing all those maps, now you're actually working shit that matters in the game context, you know? Angles that are important, when to push, uh, playing the information game, playing teamwork, a little bit at least, calling to your teammates, trying to call better, uh, working your calling game, I guess we could call it. Um, you know, your money game, all of these kind of smaller things. Now you get to work on those, and that do require a lot of time in order to be able to adapt to properly, but we're using this video, I guess, per se, as a shortcut, you'll easily be able to get a lot better at the game, assuming that you have the right equipment. Um, knowing this, uh, you, I would recommend to maybe play 10 or 20 minutes of this main game bullshit we're watching right here, this offline practice against bots, then you play like 2 or 3 maps of the 1v1 arena, then you play like 2 or 3 or 4 games uh, of uh, matchmaking or any kind of other ordeal that you would like to play. Doing these kind of things that will escalate your skill level so much further. And by the way, there has been a back wave or two or maybe three people arguing we're not sure because so many people have gotten banned as of lately, which is really good news for anyone who play matchmaking. Uh, yeah, go figure. Um, this might actually allow people to rank up even faster than before, but if you take this kind of guide right here into context as well and actually work on it, your rank might skyrocket like maybe four ranks, I don't know, but putting stuff into context properly and working it properly like this, um, yeah, it will certainly have its supreme benefits that will allow you to play Counter-Strike to a higher degree, which I find to be super fun. So hopefully people found this video helpful, if you did, you should probably consider supporting the YouTube channel, that way you also support anyone else who uh, enjoy this channel. And uh, yeah, by that I mean you should probably subscribe, maybe like the video. Uh, yeah, uh, if you properly want to, you know, support the channel, we also got Patreon. So uh, there is that. And to your patrons, you're absolutely amazing. Hopefully we'll get more of you eventually. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Have a nice day and don't get pissed to find when you play.